Assalamu alaikum, so we're from Group Trust Udikas. So today we're going to present on a topic related with Malayan Union and Federation of Malaya 1948. So this is our team member. Firstly, my name is Nurul Arisha and my metric number is 2116522. And then we have Muhammad Shami, 2117813. And then we have Abdul Rauf, 2112707. So, our question is, compare the constitution and government of the Malayan Union with the Federation of Malaya 1948 and explain why the Malayan Union was rejected and replaced by the Federation of Malaya 1948. So, here's the flow of our video presentation. First, we'll start with the introduction and then we'll move to the structure on the constitution and the government of Malayan Union. And then we will show the same thing but in the context of Federation of Malaya 1948. And then we will further show the table of the differences between the two. And then we also provide the reasons the Malayan Union was rejected and replaced by the Federation of Malaya 1948. And lastly, the conclusion. Starting with our introduction, it becomes clear that many different events had taken place in the process of Malaysia or as it was then the Federation of Malaya in gaining independence, with some of it being the establishment of the Malayan Union and consequently the Federation of Malaya 1948. The Malayan Union, which was seen as a premature attempt of the British in gaining total power, was then strongly opposed by the Malays, leading to the establishment of the Federation of Malaya Agreement 1948, thus restoring the rights and privileges which was once afforded to the Malays as the major component in Malaya. As a brief introduction to the history of both opposing system of government starting with the Malayan Union, it was seen as a deliberate attempt by the British Labour-led government at the time in creating a unitary state for a more efficient system of administration comprising both the federated and the unfederated Malay states as well as the straight settlements but with the exclusion of Singapore which was of importance to the British at the time. It was inaugurated on 1 April 1956 and pursuant to it, it was majorly opposed by the Malays who were led by the United Malays National Organization or AMNO, as a consequence of which an Anglo-Malay Working Committee was set up which then suggests the combination of the 11 states in Malay Peninsula in forming a federation which then led to the formation of the Federation of Malaya in 1948 with the completion of its constitution draft in December 1947 and finally its signing on 21 January 1948. Now, we will discuss on the Malayan Union 1946, whereby we will discuss on the system of the government and its future, consisting the structure of the government, citizenship of Malayan Union, right and privilege under Malayan Union, control and ruling by the royal institution, and lastly, the support or opposition of the Malayan Union itself. Firstly, we will discuss on the Malayan Union government structure. As outlined by the British in this constitution, the main goal was to create a unitary state in the peninsula of Malaya consisting of nine Malay states including Penang and Melaka. This state would be the place under a central administration. However, the Singapore was positioned under a separate crown colony due to its significance as a free port at that time. The Queen of England appointed a governor to rule the Malayan Union who was given the full authority over the executive and the legislative France. An executive council consisting of the attorney general, the secretary general, the financial secretary and seven other members was established to advise the government on the executive matter. Meanwhile, in terms of the legislative power, a legislative council was established consisting of the government itself as the chairman, like official members, official members and non-official members. This council worked as to advise the government on the legislative matter. In terms of citizenship of Mayan Union, here, it is notable that the Malayan citizenship was given as standard to all including the Malay and non-Malay immigrant by applying the concept of Jus Soli. Here, the Malayan Union gave free access and an equal right to every nationality, especially to the non-Malay immigrant who had the connection to apply the citizenship of Malaya. Here, the Malayan Union through its constitution mentioned that the Malayan citizenship can be retrieved by two ways. The first one is that the foreigner was 18 and above years old as the person had been residing in Malaya for 10 out of 15 years before 19 January 1942 whereby he can, can apply for the citizenship of Malaya. The second one is that the person who was born in Malaya after the formation of Malayan Union. Here, the person also can apply for Malaya citizenship. Now, we will continue on the right and privilege under Malayan Union. Basically, there are three main elements that we need to discuss. The first one is dual citizenship, second, the equal right, and lastly, the economic disparity. In terms of the dual citizenship, the immigrant may hold two different citizenship. 
For example, Indian or Chinese immigrant may keep their own homeland citizenship at the same time apply for Malaya citizenship. The con here that the immigrant will not give full loyalty to this country as they might be loyal to their own homeland country. In terms of the equal right, Malayan Union give the same and equal right to immigrant and abolish the privilege like of the Malay. Here the example can be given is that the equal right to the non-Malay to enter the administration of civil service. Here Chinese immigrants started to take part in the administration of the Malay government which then led to weakening of the autonomy and the authority of Malay people. And here, it is notable that the Chinese school were also established in Malaya with the syllabus more oriented to China mainland syllabus. In terms of economic disparity, Malay ethnic worry that the economic dominance of the immigrant which had evolved due to divide and rule concept the pecah and perintah by the British. Here, the equal right given by the British under the Malayan Union may worsen the scenario in the Malaya. In terms of the control and ruling by royal institution, it is notable that the royal institution of nine Malay state was maintained as beforehand. However, it is notable that the institution only retained its position as the head of the state in only symbolic manner. Only the throne and the palace were kept as a symbol to the public, the sovereignty of the ruler, and was transferred to the British and to the governor. In the state level, the Sultan or the King were given an advisory council which is functionally limited to only on the matter relating to religion and second to the Malay customary. Here it not include the power to collect zakat or any monetary tax from the people. In appointment of the member of the advisory council, it is a requirement for the Sultan or the King to request the permission and the validation of the governor firstly before make any appointment. In, in federal level, the Malay Sultanate or the Malay ruler is the member of the conference of ruler. However, the conference did not confer a power to any matter such as executive and legislative power. Here, the limited function only on to discuss the law of Islam and second, to, dis to advise on any matter which is requested of the governor to the conference of ruler. Lastly, in discussing the support and opposition of Malayan Union, here we can see that the views more on the opposition of Malayan Union, especially by the Malay people. The Malay ethnic were not prepared to support the Malayan Union as not prepared to be a beggar in their own motherland. In terms of the opposition by other race or other person, it is divided into two. The first one, the immigrant itself, and the second one, the British civil servant. In terms of the immigrant, the Chinese and the Indian community also criticized some of the clauses in the constitution of Malayan Union. Here, most of the Chinese began to realize that the Malay ought to be their own homeland. They could not achieve this by fighting the British and the Malaya. Therefore, it is important for them to cooperate and negotiate with the British or the Malay in order to achieve achieving their citizenship. In terms of the British civil servant, retired British members of the Malayan civil service also did not disagree and oppose the Malayan Union. Here, they disagree on the method used by Harold McMichael in retrieving the nature and the agreement of the Malay rulers, whereby the method used by him can be considered as a method of intimidation. G. Maxwell mentioned that the method used by him in retrieving the nature was against the principle in Antarctic Charter. Now, moving on to the system of government and the features of the Federation of Malaya 1948, Beginning with the system of government, the federal government of the federation was made up of a three-tier policy-making structure, namely the British High Commissioner who is aided and supported by the Federal Executive Council, followed by the Conference of Rulers and lastly the Federal Legislative Council. Regarding the British High Commissioner, this consists of the senior British representative in Malaya who is vested with the utmost executive authority in the federation, while at the same time enjoy a wide power of decision making and is given the authority to affect the establishment and the enforcement of a new policy in the federation. He is aided and advised by the executive council who mostly deliberate on matters pertaining to public policy and was widened in structure through the incorporation of the member system in April 1956 where several members are appointed to be the head of certain government departments. They would then be answerable for their respective departments in the Federal Legislative Council although they still remain a part of the Executive Council and are held accountable towards the High Commissioner. 
With regards to the Federal Legislative Council, it consists of 75 members, three of which are ex-official members, with 11 each from among the British officials and members from the Malay states and the state settlements, while another 50 being unofficial members. They had significant power in initiating and making necessary modifications to the new policies through their select committees, apart from advising and giving consent to both the High Commissioner and the Malay rulers in enacting new laws. They were also conferred with a wide jurisdiction to enact laws on 144 subject matters of public policy significance as listed under the second schedule to the Federation of Malaya Agreement 1948 as opposed to that of the state with only 10 fixed subject matters being conferred upon them to legislate upon. The Conference of Rulers on the other hand acted as the Malay symbol of tradition in the enforcing of federal policies while at the same time ensuring that the position and the rights of the Malays are guarded upon. They also carry significant roles in the system of government during the time as not only was the High Commissioner required to consult with the conference on all matters of federal policy but there is also the requirement for a federal legislative bill to be consented by them before it can be tabled in the Legislative Council with their consent being needed before any legislation may be enacted. Moving on to the features of the Federation, starting with its citizenship, evidently it leans more towards the Malays as opposed to the non-Malays and it has been clearly provided for under Part 12 of the Federation of Malaya Agreement 1948 where there are two methods of acquiring citizenship that is through automatic operation of law or by application or in another word naturalization. For the operation of law, it includes British subjects, be it Malays or non-Malays who were born in the settlement and had been residing there for at least 15 years with the other being Malay subjects of the rulers. Meanwhile, by application or naturalization, it is restricted to only non-Malays who were born in the Federation but whose parents are non-Malays and foreign-born though they are resident in the Malay states or the settlements and additionally, they must fulfill certain conditions. The first is that for states born, they must have been resident for 8 out of 12 years immediately preceding the application while 15 out of 20 preceding years being for the foreign born. Apart from that, the person must also be one who possess good character and have satisfactory knowledge of the Malay or English language and must have made a declaration of permanent settlement as well as taking the citizenship oath in swearing his utmost loyalty towards the Federation. Meanwhile, with regards to the opposition towards the forming of the Federation itself, this was mainly launched by the Pan-Malayan Council of Joint Action, otherwise known as the PMCJA, which consists of several different parties in Singapore, which had then combined with a coalition of Malay parties under the banner of Putera in forming the AMCJA Putera Alliance, with their aim being to block and challenge the formation of the new Federation of Malaya as a result of the joint effort of the Anglo Malayan Committee. In their demands, they had demanded for the inclusion of Singapore into the Federation with a responsible self-governance in the form of a fully elected legislature, while at the same time being provided with equal citizenship rights for other non-Malays, especially the Chinese who had lived in Malaya permanently and had pledged their loyalty towards it. To this effect, they had taken several steps including the publishing of the People's Constitution in replacing the original Constitution draft produced by the Anglo-Malay Working Committee, apart from launching the infamous economic strike in October 1947, which was called as Hartal. However, the movement had gradually decreased and finally disappeared following the declaration of the Federation of Malaya Agreement on 1 February 1948. So this will be the table on the differences detailing the comparison between the Malayan Union and the Federation of Malaya 1948, where as may be seen, there are several different between the two different systems of governments, starting with the structure of the government itself. For the Malayan Union, the governor had the full authority on the executive and the legislative body. However, with regards to the Federation of Malaya, it was led by the British High Commissioner, but with a separate executive and federal legislative council with the incorporation of the Conference of Rulers. From the aspect of citizenship itself, the Malayan Union has an open citizenship which was extended to all people, including the non malay immigrants. However, in contrast, the Federation of Malaya has a restricted citizenship towards the non-Malays as they must fulfill 
as they must first fulfill certain requirements before they can be considered as a citizen of the Federation. With regards to the right and privileges of the different communities of people, during the period of the Malayan Union, a big benefit to, may be seen towards the non-Malay immigrants. However, in return, it deprived the right and privileges of the Malay. And in consequence of this, during the period of the Federation of Malaya, Malays who are permanent residents in the Federation are conferred automatic citizenship, but not for the non-Malays. Meanwhile, for the control and the ruling power of the Sultanate during these two periods, for the Malayan Union, the royal institution was maintained as it was before the establishment of the Malayan Union. However, the institution only retains its position as the head of the state in only a symbolic manner. The Federation of Malaya, in contrast, had the Conference of Rulers where it acts more than just a mere symbol as it also exercises several functions in both the legislative and the executive sphere. Last but not least, with regards to the support or opposition from a certain group of people, during the period of Malayan Union, there was a widespread opposition, particularly from the Malay ethnicity, due to their dissatisfaction with the features of Malayan Union which was of disadvantage towards them. In contrast, during the period of the Federation of Malaya, generally there was no widespread opposition from the Malays. However, there had been a major support from the Malay communities in, in the Federation, but in return, it was opposed by certain groups from Singapore who wanted the inclusion of Singapore in the Federation, which was to be established in cooperating the nine Malay states and the two straight settlements. So now I will be presenting on the reasons the Malay Union was rejected and replaced by the Federation of Malaya 1948. Before the formation of the Malay Union, Harold My Michael was assigned to gather the Malay state rulers' approval of the Malay Union, which led to the official proclamation on 1st April 1946. However, since there were strong oppositions, the Malay Union only lasted for two years and then was replaced by the Federation of Malaya 1948 on 1st February 1948. The strong opposition was particularly made by the Malays, who were led by the AMNO. In order to show their strong opposition towards Malay Union, they expressed their displeasure by declining to attend the British governor's inauguration ceremonies and by completely seizing their involvement in politics and government bureaucracy. Besides, they also voiced out their rejection via several newspapers such as Utusan Melayu. Thus, there are several elaborative reasons on why the Malayan Union was rejected and replaced by the Federation of Malaya 1948. So let's start. The first reason is, since Malayan Union is considered as a unitary state that comprises the Federated Malay States, the Unfederated Malay States, Penang and Malacca, it causes all of the Malay States to civilly lack power as the British would completely rule the states. Even though the British contended their role in this context is to merely assist the Malay Sultans in governing their states, the harsh truth is that the Malay rulers had lost their rights to their own land. The second reason is due to the methods that were used by Sir Harold Michael in acquiring the Malay Sultan's approval. He gathered their approval in such a short period of time as it was done by force and threat. He would acquire some of the Malay state Sultan's approval very easy such as Sultan Ibrahim of Johor, Sultan Shamudim Alam Shah, and Sultan Abu Bakar of Pahang. However, there are also those sultans who were very reluctant to give their approval easily. So, he would force and threaten them to sign the treaty for the formation of Malayan Union. An example that can be taken is Sultan Badri Shah from Kedah. So, initially, Sultan Badri Shah opposed strongly and did not want to give his approval. However, since Mac Michael knew that the British did not consider the Sultan as a ruling Sultan, as he was merely acknowledged as a fu future Sultan, and the Sultan has no absolute powers, so he used it as a weapon against him. So, when he wanted to obtain Sultan Badri Shah's signature, Mac Michael reminded him that in order to be formally recognized as a Sultan, it would depend on his assurance to sign the treaty, and he further threatened the Sultan that if he does not sign the treaty, he will be dethroned from being a Sultan. Thus, Sultan Badri Shah had to sign it due to the circumstances that he was in. Furthermore, it should also be noted that the same thing happened to the other Sultans. The third reason is due to the methods used by Sir Harold My Michael, it further caused the erosion of the Malay Sultan's power. The treaty signed by them caused the British in particular to have full and absolute administrative powers except with regards to Islamic matters. And it also limits the Malay monarch's powers such as their political and moral authority. So Malay Sultans are considered as the protectors of the Malay. And thus since 
the Malay rulers had lost their powers, it indirectly caused the Malays to also lose their powers. As a consequence, it caused the Malays to, to be furious and resulted in them in, in rejecting the Malay Union. Furthermore, it is also interesting to note that there were also several former British members of the Malayan, such as Sir Franz Wittenham, who also supported the Malay opposition, and they also rejected the Malayan Union because Mac Michael had used the method of intimidation to obtain the Malay Sultan's agreement, and it went against the principles of the Atlantic Charter. The last reason is due to the Jew solid principle of granting citizenship to the non malays that is done very easily. The British intended to create a common citizenship which would be granted to those persons who were born in Malaya, regardless of their race, and also to all foreign-born persons who had been resident in Malaya for 10 years. The Malays objected to it because it would lead the high population of Malays being possibly replaced by the non malays In addition, since the Malays were considered as the rightful people and the owner of the state, they contended that they should have the sole right to determine whether the non malays were to be granted citizenship or not. All in all, if the non malays were to be granted citizenship, it would result in all citizens of the Malayan Union to have equal rights. So, this would render the Malays incapable of having and lose their special privileges. In summary, the Malayan Union was established 1946 by the British colonial government was deeply unsupported by the local population, especially by the Malay ethnic who constituted the biggest population of Malaya. Here, the Malayan Union had been seen as a constitution which violated the social contract between the British and the Malay as they failed to keep their promise to respect and protect of the right of Malay. In response to the opposition of Malayan Union, the British then established the Federation of Malaya in 1948 as the Federation retained the structure of central government with a few key amendments in order to cater the need and the concern of the local population especially on the right of the Malay's ethnic and the autonomy of Malay's ruler. In the end, we can see that the Federation created in 1948 had ultimately become an independent country in 1957 called as Tanah Melayu which then had been renamed as Malaysia in 19. C3 and retain its peace and sovereignty until today. That's all for our presentation on this topic. Thank you for listening. Bye bye and assalamualaikum.